Hey, how's it going? I'm Jeff. I'm Jeff Jr. And I'm not Jeff. Today we're at Arms Park in Manchester, New Hampshire, and more specifically, we're in Bear Square. Bear Square? Because there's a pretty cool statue here that we're going to tell you all about. Maybe you'll learn something. Rudolf Heinrich Baer was born March 8, 1922 in Germany. At a time of being Jewish was dangerous for many German citizens. Throughout his early life, Baer and his family faced anti-Semitism almost everywhere they went. After the Nuremberg laws were passed, the Baer's only option was to get out of Germany before it was too late. Ralph and his family were able to escape Germany in 1938, mere months before the night of broken glass where Jewish homes, stores, and synagogues were destroyed by Nazi troops. After moving to America, Bear received the education he so desperately craved and became a radio technician in 1940. A few years later, he was drafted by the U.S. Army and was assigned to military intelligence. His service allowed him to continue his education after World War II via the GI Bill, where he received a Bachelor of Science degree in television engineering in 1949. In 1955, he joined Sanders Associates in Nashua, New Hampshire, which is now part of BAE Systems Incorporated, working and developing electronics for the defense industry. It was at Sanders where Bear had his vision for video games. He started exploring ways to play games on a television. He convinced one of his supervisors to let him pursue this little project and his supervisor agreed. So with the help of William Harrison and William Roosh, Bear created the first video game system and nicknamed it the Brown Box. See they wrapped it in some pretty sweet wood veneer tape. So maybe that's why wood paneling was so popular in the 70s. Sanders licensed the device to Magnavox, and they released it in 1972 as the Odyssey. The console at that time cost $99.99, which doesn't sound so bad, but when you calculate for inflation, that's over $616 now. Nolan Bushnell of Atari liked what he saw with all of Bear's designs, so he decided to make his own arcade game based off of Bear's table tennis game. His resulting game was Pong, released in 1972. Bear and Magnavox successfully sued Atari for patent infringement though, but that didn't stop Bushnell at all. He went on and made Atari what it is or what it was in the 70s and 80s. And in fact, Bushnell claims that he's really the father of video games. Seriously? Come on. Bear went on to design and develop a number of other games after the brown box, such as Simon, Super Simon, and a game called Maniac. He continued to work at Sanders and also as an independent consultant over the years until he officially retired from Sanders in 1987. He then dedicated his efforts full time into developing toys and games until his death in December of 2014 at the age of 92. If you ever get to visit Washington DC and visit the many museums that the Smithsonian has to offer, make sure you check out the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. It's there that you'll see all of Bear's prototypes, his notes, his drawings, his schematics, everything that he had, which he donated to the museum in 2006. In 2014, the museum took his workshop and made it the centerpiece of their innovation wing. So next time you power on your Xbox, your PlayStation, your Switch, or your super rad Soldier Boy game console, make sure you thank Manchester's own Ralph Fair, the real father of video games. Thanks for joining us here on another level of Exit the Norm. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let us know, what is your favorite video game?
Did you learn anything? This is the end of the video.